If you've come to sell, you're in the wrong shop. We've enough stock on hand, up to our necks. But these are bargains indeed. Wisdom, balm and distraction for the most jaded intellect. Or oh, for only three groschens the lot. So, hmm? you know, they're only fit to light fires with. Look at those dog-eared pages and rotten bindings. Don Quixote, by the Spaniard whose name is practically impossible to pronounce. Cervantes, man, Cervantes. Hmm. And you're the only person I know who can't pronounce it. Just look at this, Professor Liedenbrock. Any dreadful call the fantastic journey of Arne Sukmussum. Then two groceries, that's hardly a loaf of bread and a flask of wine in these difficult times. Stick to your price, man. Three's fair, three it shall be. The transaction, sir, you will long remember and never forget. Well, an act of pure charity. That's what I should call it. Charity is its own reward for those who can read the writing on the wall. And what on earth do you suppose he meant by that? Hmm. What a strange story. By a man who claims to made a journey to the center of the earth. Humbug. I agree. We are scientists, not adventurers. The most fruitful theories about the structure of the earth have come from sitting in a quiet room, using one's brain, not from poking about inside some damp and evil-smelling cavern. You're quite right. Such as your own idiotic theory that the core of the Earth is composed of an incandescent ball of liquid fire. Now, it has more validity than your inane notion that the Earth's center is a solid rock all covered with layers of lava, like the skin of an onion. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the fact is, you're both wrong. All recent studies indicate that the core of the Earth can only be gaseous. Gentlemen, the truth is that all our theories are just that, theories. <laughs> None of us has the least idea of how the Earth was really formed. Because the distance between the Earth's crust and its core is over 6,500 kilometers. And no man has ever descended to a depth of more than three miles. So it's obvious we'll never have a glimmer of true knowledge until we are able to reach a depth of at least a hundred leagues. Uh, what's your opinion, Professor Liedenbrock? Hmm? Well, gentlemen, on one point at least I agree with Professor Christoph. The materials of the geologist are not charts, chalk and chatter, but the earth itself. Now, this little book I'm reading describes a descent through the mouth of a volcano into the very bowels of the earth but with an imagination that puts all our theories to shame. It's only a work of fiction, of course, but its very existence buttresses Christoph's argument that we shall never know the truth until we're able to make that journey and see for ourselves. Only six more to go. Why am I the one who has to crawl round after those wretched little rocks when you're the one that's built them? They are not little rocks. This is the collection of Otto Lindenbrock, and the long and the short of it is, I know how to classify them, and you don't. I have some good news today. They're going to let us cadets participate in the summer maneuvers between Prussia and Austria in the Bavarian forest. How thrilling. It occurred to me that if you're still going to Salzburg on that uh, ridiculous cave crawling expedition with your uncle, perhaps we could all meet later and take a trip down the Danube. That depends on when your ridiculous maneuvers are over. Maneuvers are not ridiculous. They are an essential part of military training. And as Bismarck said, a nation's army is a nation's backbone. Little boys who never grew up playing silly little war games so they can sleep outdoors in tents and hide behind trees. Well, it's not as silly as climbing in and out of caves and collecting worthless rocks. You'd better get the soup ready, Marta. He's coming. Oh, dear, oh dear, oh dear. He's at least ten minutes early today. Well, what does that matter? You know what a fanatic Uncle Otto is about having lunch on the table the moment he gets in the door. And give me the last one before he sees that we spill them. Quick! Stupid stones. Uh, uh, Professor, I was just... Yes, yes, Axel, I understand. If it's all right with my niece, then it's perfectly all right with me. Congratulations. Did you hear that? He accepted my proposal even before I made it. Yes, but I haven't. 
After all, why should I want to marry a soldier? And why not? Tell your uncle the soup is served, Miss Globin. Because if there's a war, you might get killed. And if there's no war, you'll never be promoted. All in all, I call that a silly profession. That's a treason, Mr. <laughs> Lunch is ready, Uncle Otto. Ah, splendid. I'm in very good appetite today. Good heavens. What's this? It's in Old English, and what looks to be a map. It is a map. Of Iceland. You can examine it after lunch. The soup's getting cold. Yes, yes, darling. You run along. I'll, uh, I'll be right there. We'll go ahead and start, Marta. No, no. I don't see what you can find so interesting in an old map. It's not the map, it's some kind of coded text printed below it. A coded text? Yes, and he's going crazy trying to decipher it. Then why didn't you tell me that in the first place? I could have done them for him and saved him from missing lunch. What do you know about unravelling codes? Only slightly more than Champollion. Who is he? The Frenchman that solved the mystery of the Egyptian hieroglyphics. Do you think the only thing they teach us in the military academy is how to hide behind trees. Oh dear, dear, dear me. Seven hours. And all we've managed to decipher is the signature. If only we could establish what language this message is written in. Well, since the book is written in Old English, I feel sure the code must be in English also. It could take us weeks to go through every possible combination of these letters. Not weeks, months. The way you're going about it, Champollion. Look over here. Why didn't we think of that before? This doesn't work either. Now wait, Lobin. Go back to the series you had before. Ah. Now it looks like Russian. Yes, yes, I'm afraid it's a hopeless task. Mm. Well, I'll be. In the words of my distinguished colleague, Darwin, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Look at this. Well, I'll be dashed. Monk Sneffels, you will see, provides the master key, and Scottis indicates the entrance to the gates. But the tale I've told is true. The rest I leave to you. The writing on the wall. That strange old man was right. Well, what does it all mean? It means, Axel, that you and I are in the privileged position of having made one of the most important discoveries in the entire history of science. We can't do anything about it until next year. Uncle Otto, you're being obscure again. Oh, Global, my dear child, can't you understand? This account of Sagnusen's journey into the center of the Earth is all true. He actually did it. He found the way in. That's fantastic. And this coded message provides the only information he concealed in the whole book. The mountain he entered to reach the Earth in a crust which is Sneffels, we now know, and the peak, which by its shadow cast on a certain day of the year, indicates the actual mouth of the cave through which we had to descend. Scott is peak atop Mount Sneffels. They really do exist. But why wait another year before following the St. Newsom's footsteps? Following his footsteps? The very thought of it's absurd. Ah. Unfortunately, according to the book, the only day of the year on which the sun casts a meaningful shadow on Scott's peak is June the 19th at 11.29 a.m. Ah. Oh, and today's June the 20th. Exactly. What a pity. I can't bear to wait another whole year. Haven't you forgotten? This book was written at the time of the Julian calendar. What do you mean? But of course. And now we're using the Gregorian calendar, which differs from the Julian by ten days. Which means it's really June the 10th. And we can still make it. But only if we catch that morning train for Bremerhaven. Martha, come at once. I can't 
believe all this. Now, let's start collecting everything we may need. You wanted to see me, Professor? Ah, Martha. Please pack our bags immediately. We should be leaving first thing in the morning. Is the journey short or is it long? I mean, how shall I know what to pack? Martha, we are going on a journey. A journey to the center of the earth. In that case, I won't need to pack your umbrella. I should have brought new boots. I forbid it, Cloven. I absolutely forbid you to go with your uncle on this foolhardy trip. The bowels of the earth is not a fit place for a woman. I'm afraid Axel is right, my dear. A journey like this could prove far too hazardous, even for a girl as brave as you. But you can't go alone, Uncle Otto. Who would look after you if you fell and broke a leg or something of the sort? I shall, of course. Even though it means I shall miss the war maneuvers. Oh, Axel, that's so noble of you. Very well. If I must stay at home, I just have to make the best of it. That's a most sensible attitude, Globin. Thank you. Poor Globin. She looks so forlorn, waving goodbye to us there at the station. I miss her already. Yes. I know exactly how you feel, my dear boy, but you're perfectly right in forbidding her to come along. After all, what possible use could a woman be on an arduous trip like this? Tickets. Tickets, please. Give me the tickets, Axel. But I don't have the tickets. You must have them. What? Globin always looks after things like that. Didn't she give them to you? But I... Professor, I don't think you bought any. Good heavens. I think I've got to bring the money as well. Never mind, I've enough for... Well, I'll be dashed. I left my wallet in the pocket of my uniform. Oh, dear. This is indeed a complicated situation. No. There's nothing complicated about it. You either pay me now, or you'll get off at the next station. We can't do that, ma'am. We'll miss the boat to Reykjavik. <laughs> Globen! Globen! <laughs> you two would forget your own two heads if they weren't screwed on. Oh, my oh. Child. What do you call this? It's a gribometer to measure the density of certain gases. Do you know how to use it? No, Bill is as familiar with the instruments as I am. You, Axel, a more important task. You are going to keep a diary of our daily events. You can rely on me for that, Professor. The first problem is where to find a porter. We don't know anybody in Iceland. Oh, yes, we do. My old friend Fredriksen. We studied together 30 years ago. I haven't seen him since, but I'm quite sure he'll help us. But where on earth are we going to find him after all these years? Oh, that's easy. He haunts museums the way ghosts haunt houses. Unless he's changed his ways, he'll be at the Museum of Natural History. While the two colleagues were recalling old times and discussing the subjects of mutual interest, Globin and I passed a very instructive morning going through the exhibits. Anything wrong, sir? He's lost his monocle. Could you please help us? But of course. That's what I'm here for. This staircase is magnificent, Mount. Everything is. My God. What's he doing on the floor? He lost his monocle. Ah. Oh. Monocle? <laughs> and here you see the crown jewel of our collection. Try not for Donna Lysiponosis. The light of the eye, my dear Fredrickson. But surely you haven't come all the way from Germany just to inspect our museum. No, actually we've come to explore Mount Sneffels. There's no better example of a dormant volcano in the Northern Hemisphere. A capital idea. If it weren't for this blasted count, I'd make the climb with you. Now, friend, I must ask a favor. Yes. The address of a good store, that can outfit us for climbing and the like, and the name of a good porter who can guide us up the mountain. The first is easy enough, but the second is next to impossible, I'm afraid. Impossible? It's a herring season, you know, and every able-bodied man in Iceland is either out in the boat or home mending the net. Can't you wait for a couple of weeks? It must be without fail. No later than tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're no 
use of tents anyway, so it doesn't matter. Where do you want it? Over, Over there. there. Make up your minds. This way's a ton. Here. Now, let me see. We should want some cases for our instruments. Oh. Globin, please. Oh. What's that? A gas mask. You can breathe through it under almost any circumstances. I see. It might very well come in handy. We'll take four. Now, what can you show me in the way of lamps? The more portable, the better. I have just the thing. Now, where did I put them? Ah, yes. Hans, would you move that barrel away? Ah, if it's lamps you're after, <laughs> it was sheer good luck that brought you into the only shop in town with a complete line of high-quality imported merchandise and the finest native... Just shut up happened. and show him the lamps. Here. This is the Bloomdorf lantern. Bloomdorf. Yes, yes, that should do very well. We'll take four of those also. Axel? That man over there, does he work for you? Hans? Oh, no, he's my cousin. He comes down here once a month to help me out. But he refuses to take a steady job in town or on the boat. And once a month isn't much. He's a mountaineer, a shepherd. And they are very proud. Then why isn't he out tending his flock? Now, that's a sad thing, sir. Last winter, his entire flock was struck by lightning in a thunderstorm, and he's been sitting around ever since, doing little else but whittle and play his mouth organ. Hans, my friends and I are making an expedition to Mount Sneffels. If I pay you a fair price, are you prepared to come along and help us? I want you his money. What's the sheep worth in this country? Uh, three rickstals. Supposing I pay you one sheep per week with a bonus of two rams on our safe return. When do we leave? At dawn, as soon as we pack our equipment. Isn't that wonderful? We finally found work for Hans. Embassy. Sneffels. Look at that view. What a lovely sight. This view alone makes our journey worthwhile. See those white vapors rising from the floor of the crater? If an eruption were imminent, they'd be twice that size. How long, Professor, do we stay down there? Hans, I was going to tell you this later. Fact is, we're going much deeper than the floor of the crater. We are going to descend into the very bowels of the earth. Now you can come with us or you can go home. But I must warn you, we may be down there some considerable time. 
Days or weeks? Mm, more like weeks. Weeks means sheep. I'll come. Thank you. Down you go. It's deeper than I thought. Then don't look down. As soon as we had located Scarter's Peak in the bottom of the crater, Hans began the descent, followed by the Professor and Globen. I brought up the rear, in case anyone might need assistance. Here it is. Hans, bring the baggage! The line of the shadow, perfect. Look, A.S. Arne St. Newsom. This proves he's telling the truth. I never had the slightest doubt, dear boy. Never the slightest doubt. Hans, the ladder, here. Just here, fine. Check your lamp, Axel, check it. Slowly, Hans, slowly. Right, Axel, you descend first, Hans. At this time, I am beginning to think that Arne Sagnusen's story could be true, and that what had seemed to be, in principle, only a routine excursion has now turned into an exciting adventure, although a bit risky, especially for those who have not had the good fortune to receive adequate physical and mental preparation. All right, Professor! comes, you must be very careful, Blurman. Right, stand by, darling. Right, come on down. Easy does it now. Easy. Right. Your turn, Axel! Professor! Are you absolutely certain that there's no possibility of Sneffels erupting in the near future? A stupid question! Reach, dear friends. Thanks to the careful selection and packing of the most essential equipment, we have been able to reduce our load to the minimum necessary. We have on hand instruments, tools, weapons, ropes, provisions for 60 days, and drinking water for 10. The quantity of water seems to me insufficient, although, according to the professor, we will find what we need once we have gone down deep enough into the earth. Hans, you lead the way.
Professor, there are three possibilities here. How do we know which one to take? All of them look endless. Nothing could be simpler. We'll let Zagnusen be our guide then. Once again. Uh, this is where he mentions it. Uh, cave descending to the left. By Lee Donner. Good water later on. Right, my dear? Yes, Uncle. Good girl. Come on then. Hands lead on. How much do we have left in our canteen? Only enough for the rest of the day. I was going to fill them this evening. I should think it must be sundown by now. No wonder I'm so tired. No wonder I'm so hungry. Huh. It's bad. Ah. Well, don't be too downhearted. We'll find good water soon, I feel sure of it. Now then, Globin, some readings, please. Temperature, barometric pressure. Humidity, 95%. And the thermometer reading, uh, 7 degrees centigrade. No wonder I feel chilly. What does the compass indicate, Axel? Sagnusum says here we should be heading in a westerly direction. Dead west? Good old Sagnusum. Right, let's lead on. Hans, come. If only he'd tell us when we're going to find some drinkable water. thought had crossed my mind, Professor. <laughs> You'd be a fool if it hadn't. Bear in mind that just ahead of us lie millions of years of unrecorded history. Are we going to ignore that and turn back, or do we go on? I propose that we take a vote. All right, Globin, you start. Do we go forward like civilized creatures, or do we turn back like cards? You know, I wouldn't ruin your picnic, Uncle Otto. I say forwards. Thank you. Axel? 
man who wears the uniform of Imperial Prussia can have but one answer, unfortunately. I say forward too. Hans. Forward means sheep. Backwards means nothing. I say sheep. That settles it then. Thank you. We go on. Lead the way, Hans. Uncle Otto, suppose the votes have gone against you? <laughs> I should have ignored them, my dear. What possible progress would there be if science were a slave to democracy? Come on. Illusion. You saved yourself by clinging to that rock, which has the rough shape of a human hand. And the figure I saw hiding behind a rock. I suppose you'll tell me that's an illusion also. Undoubtedly. With the disorientation, the lack of water, all of us are under considerable strain. Uncle Otto, I tell you, I saw someone! A common illusion, known to geologists the world over. From now on, you must stick closer to us. I told you not to come on this trip, didn't I? Didn't I? Oh, do shut up. Which way now? We're confronted with another choice. Yes. Now what? Frankly, my dear Globin, at this point, your guess is as good as mine. Frankly, I'm getting sleepy. That's partly because it's been growing warmer the past couple of hours. The trouble is, if we stop to rest now, before we find water, when we wake, we may be too weak to continue. How do, how do you feel about it, Axel? I could go on for miles. Professor! What is it, Hans? Letters. Like the other one. Ah. Old Sack Newsom coming to our aid once again. You cheer up. He must have had the same problem with water as we have. Maybe he didn't spill his. Listen, did you hear that? It sounds like voices. Human voices. What can it 
be? I've no idea. It must be voices. Nonsense. Isn't it at least possible that somebody else might have found a path into the Earth the way we did? It's a possibility, of course, but an extremely remote one. I suppose that's known to geologists the world over as an acoustical illusion. Perhaps they're animals of some sort. It could even be dangerous. Quiet, all of you. Try not to make any noise. Hands you need. Global. Do you hear anything now? 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 So it wasn't animals after all. It was us. It was us. It was us. You must be squarely in the center of an acoustical field. Of an acoustical field. All right. That'll do. 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 That'll do. Do. That'll do. 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 Do
You are welcome to the benefit of my experience. I think it should be made perfectly clear that this expedition is led by Professor Otto Lindenbrook and none other. My dear boy, my own interest lies in the acquisition of knowledge itself and not the accumulation of dusty academic honors. Did you ever hear such insults? How I'd love to have him with just one day in my drill platoon. Don't be pompous, Axel. Now at least we have something to drink at last. Why don't you wait till it gets cool? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Apart from the fact of calling himself Olsen, and that he obviously belongs to the human race, we have learned very little else concerning this particular individual. All that we really have determined is that his only equipment consists of a mysterious metal box. His strange and startling materialization was largely forgotten, however, in the general delight resulting from the discovery of water, which from this moment on, we encountered in great quantity. Globin appears to be the one most affected by the annoying presence of this Olsen. I'm afraid we've taken a wrong turn and lost the others. How tedious. At least we're alone for a change. If you're referring to the absence of Mr. Olsen, I must say, I find that of no great comfort. Well, I think he's boring, conceited and rude. Yes, but who cares anyway? Who cares what he's like when he has such interesting lives? Well, if that's all you can say... Ah! 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 What happened? It's all right now, dear boy. The worst is over. Uh, Globen? Not a scratch on her. In fact, she's out there having a swim. Come on. I must be having hallucinations. <laughs> my boy. It looks like an ocean. One of nature's prodigies, my dear boy. An ocean below the surface of the sea. Fresh water, too. I can hardly believe my eyes. The enclosure you see above us is nearly a mile high. Steady now, steady. Never in my whole life, not even above the earth, have I seen a mineral formation that could retain and project so much light. It's incredible. Breathtaking. Axel, come on in! Axel, come on! The water's beautiful! Go on in the water, go on. It'll do you good. Do you know you've been unconscious for nearly two days? Mind your head. No wonder I feel groggy. How's the raft coming along, Hans? Soon be finished. I hope that fossilized wood floats all right. It will float. Well, if it doesn't, I scarcely know what course to take. Here I come! Do not spit me! Come on in, Axel! Really? Where do you come from? <gasps> Your hand. What about my hand? Why, it's completely healed. How is that possible in so short a time? But it is possible, you see. It was your hand that pulled me out of there, wasn't it? I don't know what you're talking about, Loman. Do you really think it's going to be safe enough to sail in? Hans assures me that it will float. I simply can't get over this strange light. It's uncanny. 
fantastic. Yes, but no more so than the aurora borealis and caused by the same sort of simple ionization. Look what I found. What a pretty shell. Oh, my dear child, treat that very gently. Oh, oh. it turned to sand. <laughs> All these things you see are fossils, not shells, Globin. Does that mean there are still living creatures out there? I should be very surprised to learn the contrary, Axel. Where are you going, Hans? I need a rudder. Well, you carry on working. We'll go and look for something. Good heavens. They look just like giant mushrooms. They look like wooden mushrooms. They are mushrooms. Millions of years ago, they flourished above the Earth as well. Now, you stay here while I investigate. These could be dangerous. Extraordinary. It's perfectly preserved. It's in a greenhouse. I wonder how many of these you'd get to the pound. <laughs> Where could your uncle have got to? Uncle Otto! Professor! You can join me now, but take great care. I'll explain presently. Come on. Walk gently. Why? It looks innocuous enough. Innocuous it is not. That pollen can be fatal. If it falls on you, it can cause histoplasmosis. You see that sort of red dust on the top of them? It's dangerous. Huh. As I've already said, it can be fatal. Now, we must get away from here in case a breeze springs up and loosens it. Now, whatever you do, don't touch the mushrooms. Ready? Come to your line. Get out of here. Earlier, we'd have been underneath that poison dust. Awesome. Come on. Lord. I'm out of your mind, man. You of all people who criticize me for knocking a small hole in the cave wall, the vibrations you're causing could bring this whole structure down on our heads. I have my experiments to perform, just as you have yours, Professor. Your so-called experiments are putting all our lives in jeopardy. Our lives. Do you really think the sort of work you're doing is going to make any difference to anyone's life on this planet? There, then, Uncle Otto. None of this is worth arguing about. Who does he think he is? Putting all our lives in danger with his ridiculous games. Let's go and see how the raft's coming along. Hello, Hans. I found a rudder. Well done, Hans. How soon do you think you'll be ready to launch her? Soon enough. Splendid. You work very well. I'll get our gear together. I'll go with you. How do you feel? Oh, much better now. What are you doing? Mm. It's incredible. What? Yesterday you had a deep gash in your forehead. Wounds, apparently, heal much faster here. Ah, then what a fine battleground it would make. <laughs> Idiot! <laughs> From the moment of its launching, the raft had proved that it could sail beautifully, to the great satisfaction of everyone. We are maintaining a steady southeasterly course of 145 degrees, and according to the calculations of the professor, we should be sailing directly underneath the British Isles. The only noticeable inconvenience has been the discomfort produced in those persons not trained to rise above every type of difficulty. Today we received a welcome surprise. I think it's a light. I got it, I got it! Axel! What? Give it to me. Uh, Give it to me. Uh, Good girl. Shark. What you doesn't bite you. Oh. Uh, uh, what a strange looking fish. 
Do you think it's edible? I don't see why not. Well, cook it. I'm so hungry. Oh, come on, Hans, come on. Be careful, it's hot. What about Olsen? If he wants some, let him come here and get it. How does it taste, Cleveland? Like a dream. Thank you, Hans. I'd say more like sturgeon. Mm, delicious. I still think we should invite Olsen. He gets more nourishment from his books. Be quiet. Hear you. It's growing warmer here. Mm. 32 degrees. Well, that's not excessive considering we're 100 miles beneath the surface. And you're just enough for me. I'm going for a swim. Don't anybody look. You'll get a digestion. existed on Earth over a million years ago, and here we are seeing them. I'll wager two gold marks on the one on the left. You lose, Axel. You'll end in a draw, with both of them dead. here before the blood attracts other monsters. Pull sail down, quickly. The oars up, hurry. Okay. 
Somebody must stay with the raft. You, Hans. Look at that smoke rising out of the ground. Thermal heat escaping, no doubt. And over there, looks lifeless. Olsen seems to take most interest in what seems least interesting. I think he's quite a fascinating man. And I think he doesn't know half as much as he thinks he does. Neither do we. I still haven't decided whether he's a man of method or madness. Whatever his secret is, he keeps it in that metal box. What I can't figure out is how he caused that explosion. That's been puzzling me as well. We must keep a closer eye on him in the future. What strange rocks. Look over here, Professor. A battalion of giant tortoises. What an incredible sight. Fossils of the giant tortoise. They must have been here for centuries. Amazing. What a pity they're all dead. It's better they are. It could be dangerous. You know, I've never seen a dangerous turtle. They must have been man-eating, but they died of hunger. They were too slow to catch their prey. Can you imagine what would happen if they surrounded us to attack us? Coward. Fuck you. Huh? It moved. I swear it did. Why? It seems to be alive. Alive. It's astounding. They're not fossils. They are alive. They must sense some natural catastrophe. Back to the others, quickly. Come on, Globin, quickly. The weather has changed completely. The wind is blowing harder than ever, and the whole atmosphere is saturated with electricity. I feel that some catastrophe is approaching. Oh, that's a 
child. Are you all right? Axel, how is Axel? You'll soon see. How do you feel, lad? <coughs> Cloven. Where's Cloven? Oh. Well, the first thing you think about is each other. You must be all right. Where are we? Yes. Where are we? A rough calculation will put us somewhere beneath the surface of the Mediterranean Sea. Axel, if any of our instruments have survived intact, we'll soon know for sure, so we better start looking. What about Olsen? Yes, I forgot all about him. Have any of you seen him? Anywhere? Nowhere. But I found these. Huh? Look at this. Ah, oh, smashed! What's the matter, Uncle Otto? Look at this mess. Raft all smashed to pieces. My precious instrument's broken. We don't even know where we are. It's enough to make any man despair. It's not your fault, Uncle Otto. Under the earth, you have to expect the unexpected. Yes, you're right, my dear child. As always, you're perfectly right. Nothing, nothing is going to prevent me making this appointment with history. That's more like your old self, Uncle Otto. Look, Professor. Olsen's book survived the storm. That's peculiar. It's an Attic Greek. All about time and space. Never mind the book. Let's go and look for its owner. Well, for heaven's sake, don't get lost. And be careful. discovered a prehistoric cemetery for animals, apparently. What's that? Femur of some kind of primate, I should think. Prehistoric graveyard or not, how do we know that some of these animals might not have a few living descendants round here? Look over there. Dinosaur's teeth. We must take samples back for Uncle Otto. It's a molar. With a cavity. <laughs> Strange forest. Everything we encounter now is strange. And the further on we go, the stranger we get. Far enough. I just knew you were going to say that. Now look, we've come deeper and stayed longer than anyone else in history. We've more than paid our dues to science. Axel, what do you want? I want to convince your uncle that we should look for a way out of here. But why? It's unlikely we'll come back, you see. Because I, so I want to marry you. That's why. Oh, Axel. The prehistoric boneyard's no fit place to bring up babies. Babies?
Certain concepts are not yet within the range of human comprehension. I simply can't believe it. Just a moment. Now look, you must make a promise not to say a single word to your uncle about what we've seen here. Because then he'd never want to leave. I promise. I promise. All right. Come along. Thus we continued our adventure on the subterranean sea. The professor does not wish to leave one single stone unturned in his quest for knowledge of this strange universe. However, I've perceived a subtle change in him from the moment he began to read Olsen's book. Olsen? Yes, sir? This book of yours that was washed ashore with us, it claims that time is relative, not absolute. The claim, unfortunately, is true. I've tested the theory myself, somewhat to my regret and learned that under certain circumstances, one can indeed move through time as easily as one can through space. A year ago, I might not have believed you, but after the mysteries and experiences of this voyage... Even in your normal world, on the surface, there are mysteries you've never dreamed of. One thing still puzzles me. We're living in the year 98, are we not? Indeed, you are. Yet the publication of this book is 1914. That's nearly 20 years ahead in the future. How do you account for that? Why? Proof of the pudding, Professor. Or could it be a misprint? I only know I give my soul to own a device like that, with all its secrets. It's the only one in existence, my dear Lindenbrock. And you've no idea of its capabilities. It could even transport one to the moon. Professor, the sea has ended. Can't go any further. Let's go. 
Looks like some sort of grotto. Keep a straight, Hans. There's no way out. How dark it is. We'll never find our way out of here. <sighs> then we'll have to turn back. Turn back? Never. Try and secure it to that rock, Hans. Take the lamp. Pretty close, isn't it? These rocks are very slippery. Professor! Look at this! Sagnusum! Once again showing us the way forward. Now. We must try and force our way through this wall of rock. But suppose there's nothing behind it. But another endless sea. Then it's our duty to find out! We must get ahead as far as possible! It's useless, uh. Professor. Uh. We're not even making a dent in it. And I'll try even harder. We must get ahead! Be reasonable, Uncle Otto. The task's impossible. In the search for truth, my dear child. For Uncle Otto, nothing is impossible. Now, please, stand back. This is a task that I alone can accomplish. Get back on the raft. What are you going to do? Keep the raft as far back as you can from this point. This will only take a few moments. Olsen, what about you? I told you long ago. I found my own way in. I'll find my own way out again. happening.
understand. Where are we? Tell us. Try other languages. What's in there? What's in there? Listen, listen, little boy. Where are we? Answer me. Answer. Don't uh, Jamos. I mean, who's some new? Dirty Jamo. Somebody, somebody, somebody. fantastic voyage. Hans went back to Iceland, where his flock now numbers more than 100 head. He is a respected man and is often visited by his loving cousins. Globen and I have undertaken a new adventure, that of matrimony. A woman cannot do without the support of an experienced man, a man with foresight. As for the professor, he continues to visit the old bookshop with who knows what remote expectations in mind. Morning. Good day, Professor. Uh, somebody left this parcel for you. Me? When? I mean, who would do... A strange name. It sounded like Naxosum. 